Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and very changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, with true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with the ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Too late for Lent, I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I see a lot of green out there. So in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I have to tell this story. There was an Irishman who moved to a tiny hamlet in the county of Kerry. And he walked into a pub one night and he ordered three pints of Guinness. The bartender raised his eyebrows but served the man the three pints, which the man then drank quietly at a table by himself. The next evening, the man again ordered and drank three pints by himself. And soon the entire town was whispering about the man who orders three pints. Finally, about a week later, the bartender broached the subject on behalf of the town. I don't mean to be prying here, but folks around are wondering why you always order three pints and drink them alone. The man replied, I suppose it is a bit strange, but you see I have two brothers. One moved to America, the other moved to Australia, and we promised each other we would always order two extra pints whenever we would partake as a way of keeping the family bond. The bartender and the whole town were pleased with the man's answer and with his reverence for family. And soon, the man who orders the three pints became a local celebrity and a source of pride in the town. And then one day, the man came in and ordered only two pints. The bartender served them with a heavy heart. Word spread around the town quickly. Prayers were offered for the soul of one of the brothers. And the next day, the bartender said to the man, Folks around here, me first of all, want to offer our condolences to you for the death of your brother. The man pondered for a moment and then replied, You'll be happy to hear that my two brothers are alive and well. It's just that I myself have decided to give up drinking for Lent. (laughs) 
I think that's an annual story here, anyway. We've reached that time of year that is typically filled with a mixture of eager anticipation and mild dread. Some are looking forward to a period of rest, but not so much looking forward to the flurry of work and activity that must come first. And no, I'm not referring to how some clergy view Holy Week and Easter. I'm talking instead about midterms and spring break. So I remember well the feeling of, of, the feeling of being excited about the extended hours of daylight being combined with the warmer days, only to be snapped back to the reality of approaching tests and papers that stood like a wall between me and the freedom of spring break. It's around this time of year that the idea of deadlines really does begin to loom. All of the learning of the last two months is about to be called to account on a certain day at a certain time, and our hard work, or lack thereof, will receive a grade. And this academic reality makes me wonder whether we might unconsciously think of Lent in the same way, as in Lent is the period of time when we're supposed to be applying ourselves to doing all of the work that needs to be done in order to be fully prepared for the deadline of Easter. And the closer we get to Easter, the more we become aware that perhaps we've been a little lax and we need to get in gear lest we miss the mark. In conversations with colleagues and friends, I've noticed that it's around this time in Lent, towards the end, that we tend to take stock of how things have been going. And more often than not, those conversations go something like this. Well, I wanted to give up chocolate. And Sundays, of course, are an exception. The second Saturday night in Lent was a birthday celebration, so I made an exception. And then on the third Wednesday, I was just really stressed, so I made an exception. And then last week, there was a work function that only served chocolate stuff, and I didn't want to be rude, so I made an exception. And I was supposed to read a book on prayer, but I've only gotten two chapters in. So here we are at the end of the season, and the discipline that I set for myself hasn't exactly panned out the way I wanted it to, and I'm so off track at this point that I wonder if it's worth trying anymore. And there's this tinge of disappointment, maybe even guilt, that emerges as Easter gets closer. There may even be this unspoken fear that a less than perfect Lent means we won't be ready when the Easter deadline arrives. Now, I hope that that's not the case for you. But if it is, the Gospel provides a corrective. So the Greeks that we heard about from this morning's reading would be the equivalent of foreign exchange students who are transferring in right before midterms. They haven't been with Jesus and His disciples. They haven't had the benefit of hearing all of Jesus' teachings. But they want to get on board at what is essentially the last minute. And Jesus' response to their request is to say that serving Him does involve self-sacrifice, but that anyone who wants to serve Him will be honored by God. It is not too late. And the invitation is open to everyone. And Jesus speaks elsewhere of this kind of invitation. In the parable of the workers in the vineyard, those who are hired late in the day receive the same wage as those who were hired at first light. The lesson being that imperfect attendance doesn't mean less favor in God's eyes. It's not too late. And of course, there's the thief on the cross who asks Jesus to remember him. The thief had done nothing to deserve God's mercy. You might even say he had arrived at his deadline completely unprepared. But it was not too late for him. And it's not too late for us. Even if your Lent has not gone as you had hoped, You can use the remaining days of this season fruitfully, not by looking back at things left undone, but rather by looking ahead to how you can pattern your life more closely on the one who laid down his life for you. 
the church word that we use for such looking ahead is actually repentance. And repentance is a task that is not just confined to the season of Lent. It's a task for all seasons. And there's no deadline for it. Because we always should be asking how we can draw closer and serve Jesus more faithfully. So, even if it's your first Sunday in church, and you're not even really sure what Lent is, you haven't missed the boat. If you have come here today because you want to learn more about what it means to follow Jesus, the answer is, as it always has been, it's to deny yourself and to walk in the path of self-sacrificing love. And it's never too late. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The hour has come. Now is the time to glorify God's holy name. Let us pray for the church and for the world, turning to God and saying, hear us, gracious God. You call us to be a people set apart. Be with those who are preparing for baptism, confirmation, reaffirmation, or reception. We pray. You draw all people to yourself. Inspire the ministers of your gospel. Bless Ruth, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Charleston, and the Church in Wales and all who serve in your church, we pray. You write your law upon our hearts. Guide the leaders of this world and help us all to be true followers of your servant son. We pray. You honor those who choose to serve, remembering Sam, Dennis, Henry, Brian, Keen, Maxim, Louisa, Edward, Justin, Andrew, Brad, Jake, Maxwell, Drew, Legree, Kurt, Thomas, Henry, Griffin, Will, Bust, Trevor, Matthew, Christian, Jack, and all who serve in the military in mission or outreach work, we pray. You teach us to seek you with our heart all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. Bless James Simmons Elementary School, Burke High School, and all places of learning, we pray. You are the giver of all good gifts and the source of eternal salvation. With grateful hearts for the birth of Madeline Jane Virginia Marcel to Hannah and Justin Marcel, and for all the blessings of this life, we pray. For all who are afflicted or oppressed, for the unemployed, the hungry, and the homeless, let us pray. You sent your beloved Son to bring us wholeness. 
Strengthen all who suffer in mind or body, especially for Karen, Joan, Michael, Nancy, Andy, Tripp, Rob, Rhett, Antonia, Chris, Clifford, Randy, Martha Ann, Chris, Rocky, Jimmy, Donald, Lynn, Tyler, and Britton Clark, we pray. You deliver us from sin and death. Give rest to Trevor DeBose, Carol Laracy, and to all who have died. We pray. Transforming God, lead us in all our efforts as we seek the renewal of this holy place. By the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our life, empower our work, and enrich our capacity to serve. As we have known your desire to save, may we also know your power to transform. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Welcome to Grace Church Cathedral, whether watching online or here present in the cathedral. You'll see all of the activities in parish life listed in our bulletin. And next Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday. And let me just put a couple of ideas in your head. Perhaps you've never kind of walked the whole, uh, the whole uh, every part of Holy Week. Maybe this is the year you want to say, I'd like to be part of that Holy Week day by day, and you'll see an opportunity daily so that you can come and let the story speak to you day by day. The other possibility is perhaps you've been to a service on Easter or Palm Sunday. Maybe one of the other services would be one that you might like to say, this year I'm going to attend Monday, Thursday. Uh, understand what the meaning of that service is as we institute the Holy Eucharist, as we share in the foot washing, or maybe Good Friday. Choose a day that you haven't attended before. And then lastly, maybe it's an opportunity to bring someone back to church at a certain time of the year. Palm Sunday, it's a wonderful way to bring people and to reintroduce them into the sacred story. And that would be a way for us to just think of others beyond ourselves who might benefit and be blessed by the Holy Week observance, especially all of the, all of the ceremony, all the ritual, and of course, at Grace Church Cathedral, all the wonderful music. So just think on that. Would the uh, children come forward, please? Hello, hello, hello. I think green is the color of the day. Fortunately, it, does, it goes nicely with purple, so. So anybody know what today is? It's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Father Mago! Oh! Hi, kids! Why am I not surprised? What? You're, you're always so understated, uh, Bartholomew. Well, you know, I like to try to dress down for occasions. Oh, really? Yes! When did that ever happen? I don't know. But yes, happy St. Patrick's Day! Happy St. Patrick's Day! Yes! What you are know you how to say it in Gaelic? 
what are you going to teach us about St. Patrick? I know how to say happy happy St. Patrick's Day in Gaelic. How do you say it? Benach three nefele podagart. Bless you. You can look it up. It's true. <laughs> Father Rob told me. Really? Well, yes. I would. Well, if he told you, I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. So St. Patrick. Yes. Great story. Uh, a great story. His life. What's he the was, story? Well, I mean, the fact that he was taken from his homeland oh. uh, and uh, taken uh, to Ireland and in captivity, oh. he escapes. But instead of, instead of kind of blaming his captors, he goes back and, of course, teaches them the Christian faith. Oh. And Ireland to this day honors Patrick. Yes. Although he did not grow up there, he had such an impact that he is the great saint, the patron saint of Ireland. Oh, and cute. he teaches us yes. maybe when things don't go well, Maybe we can take something like that and turn it around and make something very good come out of it. We often kind of give up and say, that something bad, nothing good can happen. The Bible is full of stories where something bad happens and God makes something good. Yes. So when you've got a problem, maybe it's not something that we can run away from. Maybe in facing it, like Patrick did, something good could happen. Yes. I have a saying, I would always tell uh, uh, this story, it's an old adage, when you find yourself in the cellar of life, look about for the wine. Oh. Right? You know, we're always convinced that it's all bad and nothing bad. I, I like that saying, you know, it'll be okay in the end. If it's, it's not okay... Not, it's not the end. It's not the end. I knew that one. Did you? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm impressed. What is that? How do you say that in Gaelic? Um... Something with a lot of fists and hidden. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, uh, sorry about that one. I, I, Father I, Rob's not a very good teacher. Oh, he's not. No. Well, don't give him a hard time. Oh well. You know, he, he is a young lad after all. Ah, that's true. Yeah, right. You're in, you're you're in denial. Okay. So, St. Patrick, we celebrate Patrick in many ways. What the other thing we do? Do you remember the symbol that often is associated with St. Patrick? It's. Oh, I do. Yes. It's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a fake stone. No, no, what? No, it is a I, fake stone. It's a fake stone. Oh. It's a fake stone. What do you mean? It's a sham rock. <laughs> I've been waiting all year for that. Oh, see, you see it right here? Yes, you got Well, I've got one. See? Yeah, I'm trying to hold it if you'd move there. Oh, sorry. Even better. Okay, so three leaves, three leaves, but one God. So three parts. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but one God. Now, what it really says for me is use where you live to teach the faith. Yes. It's not like we're all going to go and teach people about the shamrock because that's not really uh, important for us where we live. But there are things that we can use in the environment around us that help us teach the faith. Yes. Use all the things, the symbols. Um, you know, like when you smell pluff mud. When you smell pluff mud. Look for oysters. Look for oysters. Right? No. Okay. Um, um, help me with that one. You don't get it? Um, I think a lot of people don't get oh. it. Sorry. You don't like oysters, do you? Well, you know, um, not, no, a, not, a whole, okay. not a whole, not a whole shell of a lot. Yeah. Uh, so the message of Patrick. Yes. Remember the green because of the shamrock, but we can teach the faith using all that we have around us to help teach the faith. The yes. Gothic arches teaching us that when weaknesses come together, they become strong. We are weak, but God makes us strong. There are oh, cool. so many things we can use to help teach the faith. And Patrick's example: when something goes wrong. God can make it right. That's right. Don't just dwell, it's all bad. What is God going to do with this bad situation? How do, we, how do we turn it around? With God's help, every problem can become an opportunity for something else. Like Lots that. to teach us, along with green beer. There's that too. Okay. Would you give us the offertory sentence? Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Glory and thanksgiving, uh, thanksgiving be to you, most loving God, for Christ in whom the world is reconciled, lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made. Through that dark struggle, death was swallowed up in victory, that life and light might reign. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died, your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts and them ourselves, a single holy and living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by your Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewal for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and all our brothers and sisters living and departed through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the glorified life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God be with you on the smooth paths. Christ be with you in the storms. The Spirit be with you at all times. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in the joy and peace of Christ.